Waiting for the green light, green light, waiting for the green light, online. There Receiving it is. Receiving your content. Pop. Pop up. Bam. And we are go. Critical Ha-ha! Welcome to Critical Intent, where we critique all things geek. I'm Jade Minion. And I'm the Cracker. We are bringing you Critical Intent live show, live show. And uh, we got a little special episode today. We got some movie reviews, some, some very recent movie reviews, in fact. We usually throw you some old school flavor, but today we got a little something new for you. But uh, actually, first I wanted to start off with uh, something I'm excited about that you've already gotten to test out a little bit, and that's the Friday the 13th game. Oh, yeah. So I tried to I tried to look this up before we started the show, but all I got was old information. I don't know if you know this or not, but is the multiplayer cross-flat platform between systems and PC? Do you know? It's supposed to be. I honestly don't know. Okay, because that's the only uh, thing stopping at, me from... At this... What, say again? At this, at this point, it's really hard to play. And oh, not yeah, like... because, like, the controllers are hard or anything. It's because, like, you have to be on during a time a whole, a lot of people are playing, and then you got to hope that there's space in their room. How many people in the game? Uh, um, from like seven to like 10. Okay. So, so break it down to me. What are your initial impressions? How you feel about it? Cause it looks really interesting. It's, it's fun. If you get to play, the problem is, is you've got to rely on other people who actually have the game. And then you, then you got to deal with some of these crybaby dudes who don't like the fact that they're not Jason one time and will quit in the middle of a game because they don't like it, Uh, which will shut everybody out. And then you don't even get the XP. And it happened to me a couple of times. I've only been able to play like six or seven times. Uh, I've been kicked out a lot because I've actually been able to get into more games, but that's only as many games that I've been able to finish. And I was Jason twice. And each time dude booted me out because he didn't want to be a counselor because he had been Jason most of the time. So he quit the game and started it out, which kicked everybody out the room. Yeah, I was kind of worried about something like that that would happen because that's kind of like that's that's that that's the downside to that kind of game where you have uh, you know the one person is kind of the the uber like super lord and everybody else is trying to take them out. Like you got to kind of have a a good team going. Like, but it's but it's cool with uh, some other players. Like I've been able to get on where where I was able to play a few games with the same people, and everybody was cool with everybody getting a chance to be Jason, because there's an actual key to like you can actually escape. There are two things you can do. You can either get the parts for the car, or get the parts for the boat, and then you got to drive the boat or the car out of wherever stage you are before Jason gets you. And then you can actually escape. So there is an actual thing you can do. You're not just running around seeing how long you can survive. I mean, you've got Jason on you constantly, but you actually got, if you guys can team up and do everything, a couple of you can actually escape. So there's actually a key to the whole thing. It's not just see how long you can last against Jason. Now, I I did want to ask you if you knew about this, because I was reading an article about this. Did you know it's possible to kill Jason? No, I had no idea. So I, I know this, you can uh, stun him, you can knock him down, you can throw firecrackers at him, you can hit him with stuff. But I, I didn't know you could actually kill him because you can't even really hard. run him over with the car. See, I'll, I'll <laughs> I think, I think you'll like, I'll, I think you'll like the way this breaks down because it's really hard. But basically, the only way you can do it is if you actually know the movies. So it turns out that what you have to do, it's like a. Um, it's a sequence that you have to follow. So uh, I got this Kotaku article um, pulled up where they talk about basically first you have to get Jason's mother's sweater, which is in the shack where he spawns. 
And Jason will be alerted once you get there. And given that he can teleport anywhere on the map, you know, you got to kind of, you know, hustle. But uh, next, right. you need to get a female counselor to equip the sweater. And then, <laughs> now here's, here's where things get weird. After you have the sweater, one counselor has to die in order to come back as Tommy Jarvis. When yeah, Tommy, I know that. So, and at first, somebody has to actually call Tommy Jarvis first. Okay, so, okay, th- they didn't have that in the article, so that's good. Okay, so. Yeah, you have to actually call radio him in, and then somebody has to die, and then they got to wait 15 minutes before they can be respond as him. This, like, real minutes? Yeah. What the fuck? Okay, yeah, they, I don't know, they're screwing up on yeah, that one. That's kind of ridiculous. But, uh, <laughs> so then, when you, when whoever comes back as Jarvis has to get rid of his gun and grab a machete and then hit Jason until his mask falls off. Then the okay, female counselor has to use a sweater uh, as an item to stun Jason. Then once Jason is stunned, Tommy can kill him with the machete. That's the only way to pull it off. So it's this uh, long, like, drawn-out kind of thing you got to do. And you have to get people to work in with you on that. Right. That's not something you could just pull off. you got to have <laughs> at least three people working together because you need, you know, a female counselor to wear the sweater. You need somebody to die and become Jarvis, and then you need somebody else to probably distract Jason and, and die just so you can pull it off. <laughs> yeah. The, um, now... The pro- first problem was is when the game first came out, so many people had bought it that there wasn't enough room, so that it was a few days you couldn't even play until they had a patch. And then now you can't even get in a room unless you're like playing at like nine, ten, eleven o'clock at night with everybody else. Ah, uh, okay. <sighs> but um, by the end of the summer, they're supposed to release a- another version where they have a, a story mode. Where you don't have to worry about other people. Okay. But one thing they could do to really make this game better is to make make it possible for the counselors to be bots. I mean, they don't have to be people. Like, if if I want to play, I could go in and just make a room full of bots and just go run around and kill them if I want. That's you know, I'm really surprised they didn't do that in the first place because that's kind of like that's the whole reason why. Uh, you know, the Left 4 Dead games worked so well was because you didn't have to have a full team. Yeah. But, like, overall, yeah. how, like, just uh, how do you feel about, like, gameplay and the uh, and the kills and stuff like that? Because the trailer looked pretty good with the kills, at least. It's fun, but you have to be able to play to unlock everything, and that's the problem. And mm-hmm. if you, and that's, and, and at this point right now, the only time I can ever get time on is, like, Nine, ten, eleven o'clock. It's just too kind of too late for me. Uh-huh. What uh, what what kind of things can you unlock? Well, you know, other Jasons, other models, which have different uh, pros and cons. Each of them have a different power and weakness. Uh, more counselors, which all have other pros and cons, different powers and weaknesses. Some are stealthier. Some you know, get more knockbacks or whatever, you know, it's, all of them got something different, but you got to unlock them all. Okay. Yeah, if, if, if... And the bad thing is, if you get kicked out of a game, you don't get to keep your XP. Mm. And that sucks. Yeah, see, that's... See, that's one of the big things I was worried about with a new game like this, because a lot of times they mess up some of the simple stuff that other games fixed, like, a long time ago. You know, like... When people drop right. the game because they're not Jason, like that kind of thing, you reward everybody else with XP, and then that person gets like punished where they have like a timeout or something where they can't join another game for like five minutes or something. Then that or keeps they, people from they doing can do it. Do like DC Online, dude. Even DC Online, if somebody quits, they just open the room up for somebody else to come in. Yeah, and give them a chance to play. I mean. And, and let someone else be Jason. Just just randomly pick somebody else to be Jason or let the new guy come in and be Jason. Just, you know, don't kick everybody out. That's ridiculous. Yeah, no, that sounds kind of silly, but... Yeah. Well, you know, and maybe... I mean, there's always a chance to patch it. Room, yeah, well, you know, sometimes when you're waiting for a room, it'll give you a room where you're in a room by yourself, and then you got to sit and wait for other people to join. 
And most times it's just easier to get out the room and try to get them into another room. Mm. So it's got so a the lot minimum of issues, you said was seven? I think, yeah, seven to, I think it's like seven people, seven counselors, and then Jason. Yeah, that's kind of high. I can see how that'd be hard and to then, get, you know, people. And then, yeah, and then, uh, and then, oh, and then everybody is totally far away from each other. Like nobody starts next to each other. So everybody's automatically by themselves. Like, I don't know, for some reason, at the beginning of every uh, stage is a, a scene where everybody's around a campfire or on the porch of a house or something. And there's a dude walking up and then Jason runs up behind them and kills him. And then everybody gets this freaked out look on their face and spreads out. Nobody goes with anybody else. Everybody runs their own separate <laughs> way. <laughs> I mean, nobody teams up whatsoever. So you're like stuck. First, you, you know, you get you, you're a counselor. First thing you got to do is you got to get yourself into a cabin and check all the drawers and stuff for weapons and, and maps and, you know, thing parts for like the car or boat or whatever. So you can try to escape while Jason's chasing it down. See, I would think it would make more sense to have everybody together in the cabin and then, like, you see some shit outside the cabin and then, like, you have some kind of timer before Jason breaks in and then you can, like, run out the back or, you know, be an idiot and go upstairs well, if you, or whatever. If you remember all the movies, though, like, all the kills were because they were all separated from each other, but they were still paired. There was still at least a right. team-up pair. Yeah. Where there was, like, at least two of them. That's where they messed up. They should at least pair them up, but, yeah, everybody's, like, spread all over the map uh, and you get this weird stamina bar where even if you're running slow it's using up your stamina bar and then if you jog to get away from jason it just sucks it up really fast so what would you give uh, it on a, cool. on a one to 20 what would you give it right now until it comes out with the the, the multiplayer or the, the story mode and, and fixes it i'm gonna have to give it out of a critical 20 but i'm i'm giving it a little higher than i probably should have just because i'm a jason fan but at this point i'll probably give it like a 14 okay <laughs> so room for improvement maybe a 12 for a casual person but uh yeah yeah it, it, like i said it's fun if you can get to play in Okay. Yeah. I'm. Yeah. I think I'll wait a little while and see if it improves. Cause if they like it all, you know, with a lot of multiplayer games like this, is it's all about the developer. If they're gonna patch stuff, if they're gonna listen to the community, if they're gonna be, you know, you know, quick on that kind of stuff. And you know, who knows? Cause well, I mean, they like delayed said, this game so many times. They're gonna release a hard copy version. They're gonna release a hard copy version at the end of the summer. So that's probably the one you should wait for. That's okay. gonna come with the story mode and stuff. And I hope they better give the motherfuckers who paid the money for this fucked up version, they better give them the the updated version for free. They better do that shit. I'm going to be pissed if I got to pay for the fucking story mode. Yeah, no, that'd be shooting themselves in the foot. They 40 bucks for this shit. They better give me it for free. Yeah. Uh, do, they, do, do you know if they have any plans for DLC play or anything like that? People. No. I don't even. I, the only reason why I even found out about the first patch was because somebody else was telling me about it. Okay, because yeah, that's but one I'm of the things too. They're is they're going to have to if they want people to keep playing. Yeah, that's one of the things too that I, I I'm really just modern gaming in general just pisses me off how much they try to rape you with the DLC. Where they're like, you know, they'll release a fighting game and it would be like, uh, you know, like some uh you know killer instinct or new mortal Kombat, and you'll be like oh look at all these new characters but you gotta either buy each one separately or they'll come out in packs like months apart and then each one will be like five bucks or ten bucks or something like that and then just nickel and diamond you till you paid like 150 bucks for a game that you normally would have got for you know 50 right out the gate and you just had to unlock people and then a year later, they send out a new version that has it all on one disc for like twenty bucks. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I never bought Street Fighter Dude, you Five. You talking about Mortal Kombat? Mortal Kombat was like that. Mortal Kombat X. Yeah. It nickel and dimed every character, but then like a year later, they came out with XL, and I was able to get that for like thirteen bucks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that came with every character. So I was like. Psh. <laughs> exactly. That's why. That's why. Exactly why I never bought a uh, Street Fighter Five because Street Fighter Five came out and they're like, 
all right, we got these, what, like, you know, 12 characters. And then they're like, oh, here's a DLC. Here's another DLC. Here's another DLC. And then they're like, Street Fighter V Super Edition with all those guys. And then we got more, like, nickel and dime bullshit for you. It's like, come on, man. Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> but, no, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Good to know. You know, we'll I'll wait a little bit before I jump on it. But hopefully, you know, we'll be able to play some kind of, you know, game like that together. Because I'm, I'm sick of all these games being separated. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Right. I mean, it's like they we both got Left 4 Dead, but we can't play that. We both got uh, Xenoverse, but we can't play that. <laughs> it's all because they got this shit separated for no reason. I mean, it's Microsoft for fuck's right, sake. Like, like it's not all on the same internet. Yeah, it's Microsoft. Like they they've been promising for probably what twelve years. Like, since the original Xbox, they've been promising, oh, we're going to have cross-platform play, and every game is going to be able to play on Windows and on the Xbox. They still haven't pulled that shit off yet. Like, how hard is it, really? Which is stupid. Yeah, it makes Because it'll sense. make them so much money. Exactly. it make them so much money, and they, they'd have a leg up on PlayStation, which actually, I think PlayStation now does do that because they have their PlayStation Everywhere thing where you can, like, play PlayStation yeah. games on a tablet and shit, too, and, like... Yeah, I don't know yeah. what Microsoft is smoking. They even got they got the VR shit and TV now. They got their own TV shit now. Yeah. Like if you don't want to pay for cable, you can just do that shit through fucking PlayStation for for like twenty bucks a month and get TV and shit. Yeah. But I think that's good, and uh, we will move on. Actually, I do want to give you a heads up uh, because uh, I tried to watch uh, <laughs> like. To give you guys a little bit of a back backgrounder, I'm in China, and in China, certain movies don't come and, uh, to Chinese market, and so even some of the movies that do come are heavily edited, so you get a lot of stuff cut out and it's to the point where it's not even worth seeing sometimes. And uh, like, like The Hangover, I remember there was this this funny scene in The Hangover where there's like uh, it was either one or two where they had some like tranny where the balls fell out of the like <laughs> like you see tranny balls or something in the movie and it's like hilarious when you see it in the movie the first time it's you know disturbing and hilarious but they cut that out of the the Chinese version completely and like I saw it in China and I had no idea that scene was even in the movie till I saw it again and apparently They've officially decided to release Alien Covenant in China, but it's, again, going to be heavily edited. Mostly, probably the best parts, which is the gory as shit and, you know, people getting murdered. And uh, I tried to watch a bootleg version, but it was a bad cam. It was way, way too dark, and I only got about halfway through it because I got to a point where everybody was in a really dark place and I could hear the voices. I couldn't see anything and shit started happening. I'm like, you know, I can't keep watching it. Cause I have no idea what the hell's going on. I can't see anything. So I don't mind if you give any spoilers in your review. Uh, but, uh, I'm just letting you know, I didn't get to see the whole movie, but what I saw of it, I liked. So, uh, all personnel must evacuate immediately. You now have 15 minutes to reach minimum safe distance. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. I am your father. Hey, where are the white women at? <laughs> Spoiler time. Movie reviews. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we All normally right, so how don't... How far did you get? Um... I got about an hour in, so about halfway. So right after the first two people died from the from the goo chest explosion, um, they went into a cave or something to talk to the second uh, replicant, David, and I I couldn't see anything. Well, that technically that's the first one from Prometheus. No, no, I'm talking about Covenant. They they got to the planet. The one dude. Uh, I know, but but the. But the other android that was there was from Prometheus. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm just saying the sec second one as in, okay. like, you know, you see one and then you see another one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, you, you go ahead and break it down because you've seen the whole movie. So uh, how, did, how did you feel about it? I loved it. I totally loved it. I, I like 
I like I honestly like the Bishop aliens. They were they seem like ruthless as hell. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean <laughs> what little I saw, bulletproof. they were vicious. <laughs> and they seem almost bulletproof. Like they were unloading like shotguns and machine guns into them and like they were they wouldn't stop eating. They just continue eating until like they lost a limb and then run off. Yeah, I thought that was crazy because that, I don't even that, think they killed them. They shot. They shot like they were all in a circle around one of them that burst out of the second guy, and they were just shooting it and shooting it and shooting it, and and like it was like yeah, it was like nothing was going on. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, like it had Hulk skin or something. Like those were like the most ruthless ones. But I'm wondering like where'd all of those go? Because obviously when he oh, spoiler alert. It turns out that the the other android dropped all the virus on the whole planet. Like he showed up and they were welcoming him and he dropped all those egg bombs on the whole planet and infected the whole planet and every inhabitant turned into an alien instantly. Well, a bishop one. Damn. So who was on, so who so, was on the planet then? They were on the engineer home planet. It turns out. Oh shit! So he's responsible. Yeah, so Waylon Utani is responsible the... for killing all the engineers. Yes, he's responsible. Oh damn! That's and then up. it turns out that he took the female survivor from uh, Prometheus and experimented on her and created the aliens that we know. He had he had alien eggs in his basement of the cave. Oh man, I, would I? But now maybe you could tell me this: How does it make sense to to make it change from a spore to an egg? Because that kind of confused me as to why would that be an advantage? Because you think the spore, you know, you can't even see because the spore. The the thing was is. With the spore, it was always a bishop alien, but with the egg, the alien adapted to whatever species it took over. So he was, like, improving the species, kind of. Okay. Like, he made the, the spread of it kind of slower with the eggs and face hugger, but he made it to where the aliens could adapt, and they had the acid blood, and, you know, it was a little more more ninja-like, but not as aggressive. But they seem to be a lot, like, a lot stupider than the bishop ones, because it seemed like the bishop ones would want to, uh, wanted to, um, uh, you know, connect with the, uh, second android. The second David, mm -hmm. the one that's responsible for everything, he actually got one to stop and look at him, he was talking to him, and it seemed like he wanted to, like, interact with him, but then somebody else showed up and killed it. <laughs> so but with the the new xenomorph form that's totally out of the question well yeah <laughs> there's no talking to it but and how what he did was is like which is funny because he showed everybody around and he showed everybody everything but nobody caught on to the fact that there was a freaking dissected human body on this counter and like all kinds of paper papers and pictures and stuff of diagrams and experiments and all this stuff and then like he convinces one dude to follow him into the basement while while you walk into the door you just see pictures of like face huggers and eggs and shit and you're just like don't go in there <laughs> well <laughs> and he takes him down there and he shows us this room of eggs and he's just like don't worry it's perfectly safe just go <laughs> down just go and look at it you can touch it if you want <laughs> Just put like, your oh, face right okay, up close cool. to it and look at it. <laughs> well, and, and that's that that's person. one of the things I was going to point out from what from the half of the movie that I saw was it seemed like, you know, <laughs> hold on, where's the, where's the, here we go. Did IQs just drop sharply while I was away? <laughs> it seemed like everybody was stupid as fuck in this movie. Everybody. Like, they they get to Except a planet. Except for the females again. Well, well the no. females automatically want to get the fuck off and leave. And the guys are like, no, it's cool. It's cool. We, we can handle this. 
Except for that one female who just fucked everything up by locking the old girl in the room and setting the whole place on fire. That's the one I was talking about. That's like she. <laughs> now that was supposed to be the wife of uh, T Dog or whatever the dude's name was up on the the station. Yeah. And, Tennessee. Yeah, <laughs> Tennessee. And the fact that like he was like, I've never seen my wife scared. I'm like, look. She was scared from the moment she saw a dude was sick. If you're telling me that she you've I, never seen her scared, obviously you don't know her very well. Cause like no, they were walking out no. of the wilderness. Like she's like, hey, get the med bay. Help, help. But she was already terrified. Like, oh, what's going on? Oh, why is he sick? Oh, he's stumbling. Oh. Lock the room and leave. Yeah, <laughs> and then right. he tried to come back. Like, I'm sorry, but I can't let you out. It was like, it's not done yet. Let me out. <laughs> Well, and not only that, and not only that, but then she runs in the room, two different people run in the room, or two different people slip on the blood on the floor. Is it that hard (laughs) to figure out that there's blood on the floor and you shouldn't step on it? (laughs) I mean, that was ridiculous. And then they go in there with weapons, but don't attack it. Right. They took off running. Like, oh my God, I slipped in blood. Oh, the creature, let me run. Like, no, shoot him. (laughs) She but had a gun. It doesn't really matter because they seem bulletproof. Yeah. But, I mean, if you had any <laughs> sense whatsoever, you see the girl getting mauled on the floor. You just you just assume, okay, well, she's already done. So I'm just going to stand outside this door with the gun pointed directly at the window hole and wait for that thing to see if it can get out. And if it can't get out, I'm going to shoot the fuck out of it before it can get through the glass. Something. Right. It may not even, honestly, it may not even have thought to try to even escape that way if, there was nothing there for it to look at. Like once right. you see he's busy eating somebody else, lock the door and get the out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, find a way to seal off the area because it was a it was a tiny spacecraft. There was no way there was like air ducts and stuff for that motherfucker to fit right. through. Right. There was none of that shit. And the fact that like, <laughs> like we we again start off with uh, a female crew member who is objecting to some stupid shit and a completely and totally inept leader who everybody has to follow even though nobody likes him. Like, that's, right. that's, that's but, definitely a theme in the Alien movies is, you know, just idiots in charge. But I kind of understood why they would rather try to see if that planet was inhabitable instead of getting in the test tube since James Franco fried like an egg roll from like get go <laughs> no i get that but then why 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 be in a rush to go to the planet when you see this big electrical storm like they were in such right. a rush that they're like the oh we gotta thing. fly like, straight wait. through the middle of this storm for no reason and then once you find out that oh the entire ship and the colonists might blow up just by getting close to the storm guys like let's go to 80 meters it's like no we might all die i don't care let's right. go to 80 meters it's like how are you gonna save your wife dude if you blow up in the ion storm like how stupid yeah, can you really be? They could have straight waited for that. Yeah. All you had Again, to do was that's wait. Again, that's while. another sign the planet always gives before somebody lands there, dude. You don't want to come here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I, fuck your shit up, and then the, you're gonna be stranded. <laughs> the thing I really wonder though is, like, I don't know if they got to this in, later in the movie, but was that whole ion storm thing that brought him out of hypersleep to begin with, was that all created by U- Waylon Utani also? Oh, at this point, I don't think Waylon Utani even knows what's going on. Like, I think this David, this, the first Android from Prometheus is totally doing this shit on his own. Okay. Because he, it seemed a little later suspect on, that kind of gone crazy. Like, you remember the look and feeling that Ash gave about the alien? Like, he totally admired it and yeah. wanted to be it. And it. That's how this dude was. But he was like, I'm going to create this motherfucker. I'm going to be its father. Uh, okay. So maybe a theme in this movie was more fatherhood, like aliens was motherhood. Yeah. This, it was, yeah, because there was, yeah, I don't think there's actually going to be a queen. But again, it's going to go on. Um, there was actually two xenomorphs in, instead of just the one like everybody said. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first one actually goes through a crunk ass battle scene because Tennessee brings down a, a crane ship or whatever to rescue everyone, and the alien gets on board and like is a 
the, the, the chick is actually attached to the outside and the aliens like running around the ship and she's like swinging on the, on the rope, trying to catch it and shoot it. <laughs> nice. And then of course they see it actually runs across purposely across the afterburners and it didn't even bother. Mm. It used it to escape because they knew they wouldn't shoot it while it was running across the afterburner. Yeah, then there goes that whole they're only afraid of fire thing again. Right. And finally, they kill him, and they go up on uh, back up to the ship, and then, oops, there's a xenomorph on the spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, well, there was a fight between the two androids, and uh, you didn't know who won because they kind of did that on purpose, uh, and yeah. one got away. And it turns out it was the bad one. <laughs> of course. Which I picked up on right away because the, the new android had an ability to regenerate skin instantly. Because he actually jabbed like a giant spike through the dude's chin and like killed him and shit. And then he just came back to life. Everything sealed up and he came back to life. Okay. So, but so like, see, uh, the one that got escaped had scratches on his face that wasn't healing and he was sewing it up with stitches which kind of gave it away if you weren't paying attention now now what i don't get i mean i get that this is supposed to be kind of a reboot and kind of a like prequel and everything but doesn't it seem like the androids are uh, and the ships are a shitload more advanced than they were in the original movies yeah but like you said this is a whole totally different timeline like it, this movie actually only takes place what like two or three years before the original Alien movie. Ah, uh, okay. So yeah, it must be just a, a hard reboot because I thought it was more supposed to like I thought yeah. Prometheus was supposed to be more like just an actual prequel. But if they're actually starting over, I actually prefer that because then they can do a whole lot of different stuff. Right. Um. So the, another one gets on board. More people die. Uh, of course, another rape scene where somebody gets, some girl gets it in the crotch. <laughs> <laughs> um, they the did the typical the blow it out the hatch. <laughs> Was that the ending? They, they blew did. it out the hatch it, again? <laughs> yep, they blew it out uh, the hatch. And one, of course, was hanging at the back at the end. Was the, the vacuum of space was sucking her out, but she was attached by a string. And dude came out and pulled her in. Yeah, she survived. <laughs> but then it turns out that right after, well, they, uh, they they go back to cryo sleep. They put Tennessee to sleep, and right as the girl goes to sleep, he says something that gets her to realize that it's not the real, the right David. And then right when she realizes, he puts her to sleep. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> and then, and, and you remember in the beginning how they had those drawers full of embryos? Yeah. Well, David goes over to one of those drawers and regurgitates two embryos of his own with face huggers in them and puts them in the in the drawers and then goes and flies the spaceship off and that's how it ends. Oh shit. And now he's got a spaceship with several like tens of thousands of people and cryo sleep waiting to come back to life and embryos. To and his, he can experiment on them whatever he wants. He wants to do with. Oh god damn. That's so we terrible. might actually see another evolution. Oh, that's terrible. That's great, the whole reason why the Xenomorph was his fault. Nice. I mean that all sounds good to me. And I was so liking the movie from, from what I saw. I was liking it uh like up until the part I couldn't watch anymore, besides just how dumb everybody was. <laughs> well yeah, well that you just get the one female who was smarter than everybody else until the very end. <laughs> yeah. But uh, that's good. That's good. So uh, out of 20, give it the critical technique. I think I give it critical because I think I can forego the, the everybody is stupid, but the whole story and the action and the aliens and the way they looked and the graphics. Everything was great. I did, there was nothing about it that I didn't believe was real, except for the fact of how stupid everybody was. And so I enjoyed the shit out of it. Nice, nice. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to when I can get a good copy of it and watch it. Uh, I'm not gonna go and see it in the theater because I know they're gonna cut too much shit out of it, and I'm just it's gonna be a waste of time and money. 
But uh, the most important question, though, come down to LV426. We got the KY gravy and the biscuits. Did they have the KY gravy uh, and the biscuits? Uh, there wasn't even a scene where they were eating, I don't believe. Yeah, I didn't see one in the beginning, but I was hoping there might be one later. Ah, uh, they broke the streak, no. man. There's got to be there's got to be cornbread but, in the next one, man. But you got to remember though, I don't even think they're going to even visit LV426. Yeah, that's like, true. They may totally cut LV426 totally out, so there won't be no cornbread, no biscuits. <sighs> but they still got the KY jelly. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you got some lube for the chest bursters, it's all good. <laughs> but man, dude, like the way the the bishop aliens exploded out the back was just like, oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the dude was on the work. table just That's shaking like. like <laughs> right? Just like, I don't even know which would be worse, dude. Like, which if I had to choose one, I couldn't even think of which one would be painless. <laughs> well, I mean, they <laughs> both look pretty bad, but I'd prefer it to come out the chest. So at least I know what happened to me before I died. Although I think most people died before the thing actually fully came out, so I guess it wouldn't matter. <laughs> uh, I thought they were always still... Well, no, the dude outside died, but the one on the table was alive because he was still sitting up like... <laughs> no, I mean, like, right before the thing comes out. Like, like it seems like they die, then it comes oh. out. At least in original well, Alien, only that's Ripley's was. the only one to survive anything coming out. Yeah. Long enough to grab him and cuddle him, like, <laughs> oh my baby, come, come on. Nah, we're gonna fall in the right. with molten iron. <laughs> 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 oh, sure, you'll, you'll cuddle a little queen alien, but you won't cuddle the, the new melty face alien, right? Oh, with the well, old man, titty. well, you, you know, when people say a face only a mother of love, there's some faces that that don't even work, <laughs> right? I mean, that thing was hideous. <laughs> But that's good. We got the alien review. It seems like you liked it. I liked what I saw, and uh, so I, I say it's a good recommend to check it out. I I, I I I think I left enough stuff out where you will still be surprised by a few things. Oh, I'm gonna enjoy it regardless. Like spoilers don't really affect me unless you know it's it's a fucking you know unless you say otherwise. <laughs> but you gave me permission. Yeah, this is the I see dead people kind of spoiler. You know, then I'm like, uh, okay, you fucked it up. <laughs> But uh, what was also great, dude, is they they followed the the alien ending with the blow it out the hatch. That's good. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Well, moving on, we have Wonder Woman, the much hyped, must anticipated newest DC film. and first off let me say i did not expect this movie to be good because the trailer was not good the last what eight dc movies were not good (laughs) and everything leading up to this just like except for what a few batmans the first two Batman, yeah. That's why I say, like, the last eight DC... Because it was, what, like... uh, The the third Nolan Batman was shit. Uh, Dark Knight Rises. Uh, right. The, and then Batman... The, the and three and then... Superman movies were... Yeah, because they did the Superman, then they did the... With the Kevin Spacey. Then they did the reboot Superman without Kevin Spacey. Yeah. Then they did Batman versus Superman. Man of Steel. Yeah, uh, and... Superman Returns. Right. And then, you know, they did, uh, well, the Green Lantern, you know, I try to forget that one, but it existed. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I want to forget it. Yeah. <laughs> I wish it, it, it can, the, the thing is, though, is they can actually redo it with, like, one of the other Green Lanterns. <laughs> Which they should, yeah, but mm, we'll see. Right. But, uh, and then, um, and then, you know, this one. So, I did not expect it to be good. I wasn't really planning to see it in the theater at all until I heard how much hype there was about it, like, after it was released. So I said, you know what, I'm going to give it a shot. Because, you know, I am a Marvel fanboy first and foremost, but I do love my DC. I love Batman. I love Flash. I love, uh, you know, some even some of the, like, 
more minor DC characters, you know, people who you don't see very often, like uh, Cyborg or, um, you know, like like you said, the whole Doctor Green Lantern Thing. core, because you got like a bunch of random Green Lanterns out there that have interesting stories in the comics. So I like DC. It's just they've been, you know, shit in the bed when it comes to the movies. <laughs> but Except unless you go animated. Well, yeah, animated, they're they're ruling it, but it's mostly with Batman stuff. I mean, you know, like Marvel yeah. has some good animated stuff too, but yeah. almost all the good DC stuff is is Batman related. Um, but well, that's what people. <laughs> but the the movie, um, I will say, it starts off really really strong. Like from from I'd say the first forty minutes of the movie, I was I was all in. I was like, this shit is great. This is gonna be a really good movie. I'm, sh- I'm sure, I'm sure a whole bunch of Amazon women running around half naked, whooping ass and shit help. Well, I, 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 tight, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I admit a bias towards really strong females doing flips. I mean, I'm you know I'm I'm a man. I say I just you know I'm I get off on that. You did family Kamehameha in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All so, so at the start, now I want to start off with the good, and then I'll give you a little bit of the bad, and I'll give you my review, my my overall feeling. So. The, the opening section where they show the kind of young kid Diana, you see her in the trailer a little bit. Um, they show the mascara and the island, and it's beautiful. Like, the CG is great. Um, all the characters, you know, the armor and the whole, like, their whole life was really well done. Um, the kid was, a you know, pretty good, you know, because they only had, like, a short time with the you know super young diana so it didn't get old you know because kid actors you know you always got to worry about that but it was it wasn't that long and it was good and she she grew up fast and they had some fight sequences where they were training and i thought the choreography was pretty good they're you know riding on horses and flipping around and shooting arrows and like yeah I i thought it was really well done and then you know just the the feeling of that like hope and the feeling of righteousness that comes from Wonder Woman. I thought they did a really good job with that. Just setting the tone for Wonder Woman's character through this kind of short, not short, but this origin story kind of fit at the beginning of the movie. Now, she she kind of discovers her powers gradually as the movie goes on, which I also like. And, you know, it kind of adds to the whole, like, building her up slowly as things go on. And um, then, you know, she uh, she kind of, um, I, I can hear stuff. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, so, and then she kind of goes, um, she she finally awakens, like, her, her bracer shock, which is like her Hulk thunderclap with the bracers. And, and right when that happens... Uh- I guess there's some kind of tie between her and the islands being um, blocked out from the outside world. Because right after that is when Steve Trevor and his World War One biplane comes crashing through the barrier. And she goes out to save him. And then the Germans show up. And then shit goes crazy. Now, he was I have a Black to... Hawk, right? Hmm? He was a Black Hawk, right? A Black Hawk? What do you mean? Yeah. The, that was the name of the fighter, the, the the squadron that he was part of. I thought was the Blackhawks. Oh, I don't know. They didn't even show. It was just him. He just, you know, he was in the plane. He crashed, oh. and then she saved him from the plane before he drowned. Like they didn't go into any of that, like uh, anything what he was doing beforehand. They just kind of threw him in. And uh, oh, okay. and when I'm talking about stuff that's good, I gotta say the 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 absolute best thing about this movie, hands down is the theme song. Jesus Christ, man. They hit it out of the park with the theme song. That shit hit so hard. Like, I just want to get out of my chair and start punching shit. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> it's like the Damn. first time you hear the Superman theme. Like, it just gets you all hype. You're just like... Da, 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 da. Right. And then right when it hits, it's like... Dun, da, da, you just want to, like, jump off of something. You know, for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> Rip your shirt off. Right, yeah. <laughs> 
And I feel like the Wonder Woman theme has that same kind of power. It's like, dun -dun 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 I mean, just that swell right there. Like, I'm gonna start running to this shit every week. <laughs> I mean, that just that violin and that, or the cello. It's like, oh man, it's like epic. it hits hard. I, I love it. And apparently, this the 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 composer Rupert Gregson Williams. This is like one of his first big hits because I looked up some of his other work, and it was like some smaller films and some animated stuff, and nothing that I really liked. But this one, man, this goes down to me as one of the greatest movie themes of all time. Like it, it just really like gets you hype. And I mean, I'd even put it up there with like, I mean, I said Superman theme. I mean, that's iconic as hell. But like, I'd put it up there with like you know, the theme to the original Matrix, like, just for how hype it gets you. And uh, so that's that's all the good in the movie. Like, she she is really, really good at being one half of Wonder Woman. Now, the half that I'm talking about is the naive kind of, you know, seeker of justice at all costs, regardless of consequence. Right. Like she's just ready to run straight into danger for any reason, you know, at the drop of a dime. And that's part of Wonder Woman's character, which is that she doesn't give a fuck what the rules are. If she thinks something is right, she's going to do it. And that was the whole problem. Right. I think with DC's take on Superman was that, you know, Superman's killing people and, you know, right off the rip. It's like, it's okay for Batman to kill a couple people, but they went out of their way to not let Batman kill people in the Nolan movies. And then they bring out Superman and they're like, oh, he'll just snap Zod's neck. It's all good. It's like, what? Like, <laughs> if right. anybody was going to kill somebody, it'd be Batman, not Superman. But they've completely flipped that around. So it's like, uh, you know, that I didn't really, it didn't feel like a Superman movie when I watched those movies. This felt like a Wonder Woman right. movie. And now, I, the bad, I think. Steve Trevor, the guy Chris uh, Chris Pine, he was just okay. not good. Like he, his performance was not believable. He was trying to be this kind of you know cocksure military man with you know who's just kind of oblivious to you know what's going on around him in terms of like how strong she is and how how crazy everything is. Like it's like he kind of mocks her. For, like, her whole quest to kill Ares, because she starts off, she's like, oh, I'm going to go with you. you. I'll let you get off the island. You just leave me to Ares. And he's like, uh, Ares? Like, the god of war? <laughs> like, and the whole time he's mocking her about it. Meanwhile, uh. he's seen that she lives on an invisible island that nobody's ever seen before. She can speak, like, 1,800 languages. But he's <laughs> doubting, like, he's doubting that there's anything, like, special about her. Even... When she finally uh, uh, reveals the fact that she's actually superhumanly fast and strong, they when they first arrive in London, they get ambushed in the alley, and he's like, "Stay behind me!" And then one of the dudes tries to shoot him, and she reaches around him and deflects it with her bracer, and he's like, "Uh, maybe not." You would think that would be All the right. time when he'd switch, like his idea about her, and be like, "Oh, okay, well maybe she's a lot more than I thought she was, and maybe she's got a point with this whole Aries thing." But no, like he continues the whole, almost the entire movie to doubt, like to just think she's crazy. So I'm like, okay, uh, I get that that's how his character was written. It's not really Chris Pine's fault, but just overall, like I didn't really get any kind of warm feelings from him about her. Like I didn't really believe that he was really interested in her, like in terms of like, you know, falling in love with her or anything like that throughout the movie. Which was actually good because they didn't really focus on any kind of romance shit until, like, kind of near the end. Uh, but, like, Ed, Ed, he, his performance was just not believable. So that that's that. Second thing, when I say she was good at being half of Wonder Woman, the inspirational half, I'd say there's two points in the movie where she's actually, like, super heroic and actually makes me, like, want to like you know cheer for her as a superhero but most of the other time i think she doesn't really have the range as an actor to pull off anything beyond 
sultry sexiness and naive childlikeness. Like, she's hot as hell. I mean, she just looks at you and it's like, God damn, she's gorgeous. But... Yeah, I'll give you that, but at the same time, she's not Wonder Woman. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I see her as Wonder Woman, but she's not as thick as all the Wonder Womans I've grown up with. And and this this herein lies the problem, and why I thought the movie was going to be bad to begin with, or why why I wasn't expecting the movie to be good to begin with, is this picture I'm showing here is what I think of when I think of Wonder Woman. As far as dimensions. Now, Wonder Woman has been drawn very differently in many different eras. Of course, you know, art changes over time. But one of the things was she was always a little thick. She always had a little yeah, muscle yeah, on her. Always. She always had like some thighs or at thing. least like some arms, you know, where she was, you know, a little bit like thicker than the average, you know, superhero woman. And I mean, even if you go back to like, you know, Wonder Woman, you know, say uh, like... Wonder Woman number one, you know, like if you look at her, like, look, I mean, this old school picture right here, for example, like she's got some, you know, powerful delts. You see her biceps flexing a little bit. And then it's all this thigh action sitting there right in your face. Just thigh, bam, uh, take it, you know? Right. And that's old school. Yeah, that's super old school. You know, this is the, the freaking 40s and 50s we're talking about. And you got a and you got a woman looking strong and thick. Right. Gal Gadot, Gadot, however you say her name, I think it's Gadot, but, but uh, she, thighs, she has none. Muscle, she has none. Like, none. She's got the height so that she can look good next to a man and look, like, strong and kind of have a little bit of presence. But I cannot, in my mind, separate the idea that she's this badass, ass-kicking Amazon swords you know, a sword warrior where she right. has no arm muscles whatsoever, like nothing. I mean, you think, you know, for all the work that they do for like Superman, you know, how jacked Henry Cavill was, how jacked freaking right. even, even uh, in the ben new Affleck Batman versus Superman. Like yeah. Crazy for Batman. Yeah. Ben Affleck probably was on the juice for months to get as jacked as he was in, in Batman versus Superman. Yeah. The fact that they did not do anything to make her any stronger looking than she was. They could have at least had her a little dehydrated or something so she get a little definition in her arms or something. But the whole movie, I just kept thinking, like, when she was doing these epic stunts, I kept thinking, this is, I, I just can't believe it. She's too thin. Like, I get it's all superpowers See, and stuff, but I just, I can't buy it. That's where they... That's where they messed up with her training for the movie because they all all they concentrated on was all the action scenes, all the fight scenes, fighting and combat. But there was no actual like muscle building, yeah, which made her thinner because she was just building on her combat skills. Yeah, it was all cardio. Like everything, it seems like she did yeah. for the movie was just running around and jumping. And and it turns out she came out looking more like a swimmer than a, a giant Amazon Xena looking chick. Right. And so she, you know, they could have had her doing squats and, and fucking, you know, shoulder curls or something for, you know, four or five months. And she would have looked better than she looked in the movie. Like, it wouldn't have taken that much to get her looking, you know, at least somewhat defined like she was an actual warrior. But that aside, I get it. Can we get Superpowers, some butt pads I can something? let it go. The problem. Can we get the, some butt pads? <laughs> yeah, some, yeah. I mean, come on. Some, I mean, yeah, squats, Wonder Woman, do you speak it? Like <laughs> squats. So I mean, even Angelina Jolie got super huge boobs for her role as as um uh, La uh, Laura Croft. Yeah, and she had some arms too. Like there's some scenes in in the Tomb Raider movie where she she actually has some definition in her arms and shit. Like they, right. you could tell she trained for it. And you know, so like that that was a problem. Not not a deal breaker or anything, but it was a problem. Like if there, you know, it's obvious that Justice League is going to be the same way since Justice League is coming out like the end of this year supposedly. So I doubt she's going to look any different for that movie or any other movie since they don't seem to care. But fine, okay. Now beyond that, we'll see. Mm -hmm. the humor in the movie. There were like two moments in the movie that were kind of funny, like kind of laugh out loud, like ha, okay, I see what you did there, but. A lot of it was kind of forced, and it wasn't really that funny. Like there was a sidekick guy who was uh who was supposed to be an actor who was kind of flirting with her, 
And they were trying to make that kind of funny. I was just like, eh, okay. Then there's this guy who's supposed to be a sharpshooter who was a drunk. And they were trying to make fun of the fact that, like, oh, do you see this guy getting beat up in the bar? And they're like, oh, she says, oh, well, at least, you know, this guy you're recruiting, you know, can throw a punch. And they're like, no, it's the guy getting hit that I'm recruiting. And it's like that, <laughs> not, you know, it was like, uh, okay. It, it's been done before, but all right, that's fine. And just overall, the people around her were weaker as actors, I think, than she was. Like, she did a she did a good job. I, I still think she should have been a little muscular, but a little more muscular. But she did a good job in terms of acting. And the biggest problem, though, I have with the film, which I'm, I'm, I'm being critical right now because this is critical intent. This is what we do. But right. the biggest problem with the movie is all the green screen work. You could tell that 90% of the movie was done on a set in front of a green screen for two main reasons. Damn. One, she was never dirty. The entire movie, she did not have a single smudge on her face. She was blowing through walls. She was kicking dudes through through freaking, you know, buildings and lifting tanks. Her hair never faltered. Her face was never smudged. <laughs> she never got a bruise. Nothing. She always looked like she was on a super sterile green scene set standing in front of a bunch of lights, perfectly well lit every single shot when she's fighting, when she's doing anything. And it kind of pulled me out because it's like every time the action scenes came up, the action scenes were really good. But I always kept thinking like, when is she going to, you know, I don't know, have her hair flip out of place once? Never. All right. She's in battle. Yeah. <laughs> she's supposed to be this hardened warrior who's like ready to fight at any moment. But like she always looks like a model and it just didn't work. The villains, super flat. Like, I get it's World War I, and it's easy to make the Germans evil, but the thing is, is that World War I, the Germans weren't as evil as they were in World War II. It's not as cut and dry as it was if you're doing a World War II movie. And right. they and were if trying you look to make... at the Captain America movies, like, that yeah. was around the same time, too, and they had all kinds of crazy shit going on. Yeah, but I mean, like, Captain America is a good example. Now, you know, Red Skull, it made sense. He had a he had a kind of mantra. He had that Nazi ethos that he was trying to live up to, you know, the strong should survive the master race, all that kind of thing. It made sense. People understand that as a villain, like, and the fact that you had uh, Ru- uh what's his name? Um, Rupert. Uh, no, what's his name? Um, the dude who was agent Smith. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can't believe I'm forgetting his name, but, uh, he is a great actor. So, I mean, just him being the villain yeah. was, was great to begin with. The villains in the movie, they had Dr. Poison, who was, a, who was apparently this super evil chemist who just liked killing people for no reason. They never explain it. They never tell you anything about her backstory of how she got her face all fucked up. They just say, oh, well, she likes gassing people for some reason. All right, fine. Her boss, super evil German dude who apparently wants no peace for any reason to the point where he's later in the movie, decides to kill all the other German generals because they wanted peace. Why? I don't know. He's evil. Just deal with it. He's evil. Like, I just didn't believe it. Like, <laughs> it just didn't make any sense. It was just like, there was no I'm backstory. Evil. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to have multiple villains in a movie, you got to have at least some reason for them to be doing what they're doing, and the only reason given was, it's a war, I'm evil, I want to win. Okay. All right. The movie was about 35 to 40 minutes too long. When I say the first 40 minutes too. was strong, I mean really strong. Like if I had like if you had shown me the first 20 minutes of this movie, I would have been like this is going to be the best movie ever made by DC, like hands down. And I still I actually do think it is the best DC movie so far in terms of like the modern, you know, DC movies. Um right. But it's just too long. You know, it's two and a half hours, I think it is. And I get why they made it so long, because they wanted to give more, uh, give her more of a reason to be good and, like, understand what humans are like and men and, you know, war and all that stuff. But they could have done it a lot faster. They could have done it a lot tighter. And it, it by about, by uh, basically two hours in, I was like, okay, is it over yet? Like, what's going on? Like, and then... Right before the end of the movie, they introduce Ares, 
and you find out who Ares is. And then she has to fight him. And they have this kind of monologue where he's talking to her and explaining, like, oh, you know, this and that. And Ares, again, good actor. I think he was the better part of the villain. If they had just had him be the villain from the start, it would have been much better. But they had three villains, basically, in the movie. So none of them really were that interesting because they had to spread it so thin. So... Mm. Sounds like I'm down on the movie, but overall, I would say this was a great movie. Uh, these are the problems my that I problem had with it. with it. Go ahead. My pro- my problem with it is the fact that they did the Wonder Woman movie way, way after the Batman versus Superman movie, where they introduced Wonder Woman, but it was like she was already established. Like, she had been chasing down fucking, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Doomsday? Yeah, Doomsday. He, she was hunting down and chasing Doomsday down, which means she had already been on in, on American soil for a while and already took care of her shit. Like, she was out doing her own shit already. Like, and then they do the Wonder Woman movie where they establish her. It's like, wait a minute. Well, Is she I mean, here already, or well, that was really just a problem with Batman Ish. versus Superman to begin with. Was it's the same problem they had with uh, what was it X X three, where they just like more mutants, more cool stuff. We're just gonna throw as many mutants at you as we possibly can for no fucking reason, and like it was like that in Batman versus yeah. Superman. It's like they they combined they combined like three different. Batman storylines and Superman storylines in one movie with Batman versus Superman. And then yep. threw Wonder Woman in for no reason. And then just threw her in there to help with Doomsday. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, it, it made no, they like, they had the death and rebirth of, or they had the death of Superman in there. They had Batman versus Super, the Dark Knight uh, uh, comic series. And then for some reason, they had some Justice League little tip off with the whole like, uh, uh, like Flash thing and like him having some kind of future sight about like the world dying and and then you know all this other shit like it, it yeah that that movie was a clusterfuck this movie is far and away better than that movie um, but if with all that said like I said the movie was really good the first 40 minutes is probably the best 40 minutes they DC has done since like you know the Dark Knight and I think that if I was to give this a critical critique, I would give it a 16 out of 20. Nice. Now, I would... That's pretty it, good. The, the two things that would, would have made it, like, probably closer to an 18 would be less green screen work, more realisticness, like, in terms of, like, how things are shot and how things looked, and then her doing a couple squats and some fucking deadlifts or something to get some arms and some ass. <laughs> because I just, you know, you know, you know where DC is really messing up is, is they're rushing to get the justice league out before we get the individual movies. Yeah. Like we get wonder woman first, but they're coming out with cyborg after justice league where cyborg supposed to be in justice league. So why are we getting his backstory after his story? <laughs> yeah, like, and, and Flash. They don't even have a Flash movie yet. And we're just going to get Flash yeah, thrown in there, too. Yeah, and they're going to come that. So most likely Justice League is going to be it, two and a half to three hours on. long. And they're going to have to do some kind of like origin story for Flash, some kind of origin story for Cyborg in there. That's going to take at least 10 to 15 minutes of the movie. And then they're going to have to do the whole them getting together for the first time thing, and that's going to be like 20 minutes in a movie. And then you're going to have a big fight scene, which is going to be another 30 minutes in a movie. All right. And at the end of Batman vs. Superman, you see Bruce Wayne talking to both Flash and the dude who who is not Cyborg yet. Yeah. But just because he was some kind of engineer or something. Like, they, like, like their movies already happened. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like exactly. what the hell's going on here they're but, rushing the big movies way before they've even made it there 
Yeah, exactly. And, and not only that, but they're rushing it after having so many failures. Like they failed on Superman right. twice. They failed on Batman versus Superman. They failed on Green Lantern. They they hit it, you know, pretty well with Wonder Woman, but Wonder Woman is released the same year as Justice League. So like they didn't know this movie was going to be, you know, as good or, or as well received as it has been. So they're right. already ready to throw all their eggs in the Justice League basket when they haven't even established any of the main characters. So, I mean, I, and, and to be honest, I think Ben Affleck as Batman was the best part of Batman versus Superman. But everything else is garbage. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, I think I think <laughs> overall, good movie, great theme song. I think it has good potential for a sequel. I would definitely see a sequel. Uh but I think really the the problem is I think uh, the actress gal she needs to do a little bit more acting training and a little bit more squats because especially like I I think the best way to compare it is if you've seen Supergirl the TV show the girl right. who is the actress who plays Supergirl she has the entire persona of Supergirl down pat when you see her in that suit. You feel inspired. You feel like, wow, she is like right. super wholesome, super justice, super everything, super. You know that she embodies the idea of Supergirl when she's flying around and when she's talking to people, her lines, everything. But when and she has some baby gun, right? Yeah, she she's she, you know even though some of it might be just the suit she's wearing, she's a little swole. You know, she's got some shit going on. And actually, she right. has better thighs than fucking Wonder Woman does. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's like that just, yeah, you so, know. And give her some give her some artificial implants inside the suit. I mean, come on. Yeah, some Beef her up. Yeah, She's an something. Amazon. Exactly. <laughs> what the hell? So, and, and, and with Amazon the whole, like. Amazon knows what flat means. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> But yeah, I think like I mean, I really hope that they. I mean, I think with the addition and Aquaman too. I forgot Aquaman's in the Justice League too. There's no origin story for him yet either. Now Aquaman supposed to be, there's supposed to be a movie, and I, I, that I'm actually excited for. I am uh, I like too, uh, Jason Momoa. I've I like always him. liked him from the Stargate series. Yeah, I like him too. I think he's he he can pull off. He looks good as Aquaman, and I think he'll bring enough like masculinity and like awesomeness to the aquaman role so people stop shitting on aquaman and and making fun of whales you know like, <laughs> right but well, yeah shoot. well shoot man the most recent aquamans in some of these were like he was like i say again you like, broke he up was just, like <laughs> oh what say again you broke up Oh, the the most recent um, Aquaman's we've gotten were kind of barbaric, where they were just out looking for fights. Yeah, he had a, he had he's missing an arm and was like ready to throw down and, and and fuck up all of Earth with his armies and shit. Like that's the Aquaman I want to see, not the old like you know just uh, Super Friends Aquaman. No, you can leave that one in the past. Right. <laughs> we don't well, need that one anymore. Even in the bold, even in the brave and the bold, like he didn't have his missing hand, but he was just out there just wanting to fight and shit all the time. Yeah, and that was like super, super goody Batman. And even Batman was like, "Dude, you need to chill out." Need to <laughs> but yeah, I think uh, if they do, you know, I think uh, if they do another movie, I'm definitely on board, and I think this one was good. So uh, I think that's all for today. We can close it out. Nice. Go ahead. All right. Thank you for listening to Critical Intent. Be sure to like and subscribe on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to get new episodes as they come. And check us out on Facebook.com backslash Dave Minion Studios for other Dave Monastery products. And let us know. Thank you. Like and subscribe. Get the fuck out of here. Do it, Mike. Oh, shit.